Chapter 7.2, Systems of Linear Equations in Three Variables. So you've been introduced to systems of linear equations in two variables in the past, whether it was in an algebra course here or in previous algebra courses. You've, you, you should come in here generally familiar with solving a system of basic two variable linear equations. So that's like 3x plus 2y equals 7 and 4x minus 9y equals 8. We solve this through methods called substitution and elimination or we can do it by graphing any of that. But we are now going to expand upon that into systems of linear equations in three variables. So instead of just x, y, we'll now have z. So to begin, um, a any equation of the form ax plus by plus cz equals d, where a, b, c, and d are all just real numbers um, that are not all zero, that is a linear equation in three variables, x, y, and z. Um, so for example, a system of linear equations would be one that has multiple of these types of equations together. And we're, our goal is to figure out when all of them can be satisfied. So a solution of a system of linear equations in three variables is instead of an ordered pair x, y, it would then be an ordered triple x, y, z um, that satisfies all three equations at the same time. Then the solution set of the system is the set of all possible solutions. So in this case, for this example, x plus y plus z equals 2, 6x minus 4y plus 5z equals 31, and 5x plus 2y plus 2z equals 13 has, a, has the solution set, but specifically a singular solution at least, um, of 3, negative 2, 1. So this means that we can plug in 3 for x, negative 2 for y, and 1 for z, right? Just like you have ordered pairs that are x, y, and we understand the order by default is x, y. The order by default of an ordered triple is x, y, z. In order for a system of linear equations in three variables to have a singular solution, and it won't always have a singular solution, but in order for that to even be possible, um, we need three equations also. So for um, when there's two variables, what you're more used to, you only need two equations, right? 3x plus 2y equals 7, 8x minus 9y equals 17. That's all you need in order to solve for x and y individually. But for three variables, we need three equations to have a, a, possible, a possibly solvable system. However, not every system will end up having that solution. So, um, systems that have a single solution will look a certain way graphically. Now, if you notice here in these pictures, these don't look like the types of graphs you're probably very used to, right? So when we work with two equations with two variables, x and y, that's normal linear equations where we're graph we can graph them on an xy plane, right? And so we're looking for where do those two lines cross, because they're linear, right? And so they're gonna cross at some point and that is the solution we're looking for, right? So basically when you're working with two equations in two variables, you have three options. Either the lines will cross, the lines will be parallel to each other and never cross, so there's no solution, or the lines will um, will be the exact same line, like they're basically on top of each other, right? And so then there's infinite solutions. With three equations with three variables, you get this a similar situation where you can have one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions. It just looks a little bit different graphically because as soon as we add in that third variable, we are now forced to graph things three-dimensionally. Now you don't need to be able to do that in this class. I'm just showing you know generally what this would look like. If you go on to calculus, that's when you'll start learning about three-dimensional graphing and all of that. Um, but so a system that has a single solution in three dimensions with three uh, equa uh, three equations with three variables will look like three planes intersecting each other at a singular point.
like in the picture. Um, systems that have an infinite number of solutions are those which after doing the methods we're going to learn, elimination and all of that, uh, we end up with an always true statement such as zero equals zero and that will make a little more sense when I give an, an example later but essentially graphically what that means is that there's a whole lines worth of solution or maybe even a whole planes worth basically somehow your three planes that are being intersected intersect in more than just one point they intersect in a whole infinitely many points on a whole line or maybe over their entire like if they're the exact same planes all three of them then that would be even more you'd get a whole plane that's the same then systems that have no solution are those that after elimination once again once we go through the methods will end up with what is called a contradiction this means we're going to go through the solving steps and end up with something that's never true it's it's false like 3 equals 0. We know this to be a false statement. So if we go through the solving and we get something that there is no x and y value that could make that true, that means there's no solution. So in so graphically, all three of these examples are possibilities of what that could look like where the three um the three planes might intersect in some ways, but they'd never intersect all three at the same time. Okay, so now let's go on to the actual solving of a system of linear equations in three variables. So, when given a system of linear equations in three variables, my best advice is always to number your um, number the equations. Like you won't necessarily be given them numbered, but I always put like a little one, two, three next to the equations because it just really helps tracking things. So you'll see these numbers will keep coming back, right? Okay, so we've got our three equations. x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9, negative x plus 3y minus z equals negative 6, 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17. Okay, so when uh, you learned how to solve systems of two equations and two variables, generally speaking, you had a choice. You could do the substitution method or the elimination method. As we get into um, solving with three variables, Technically that choice still exists, but substitution gets really annoying. So we are mainly going to focus on the elimination method here. So we get to choose a variable to eliminate. And there isn't a wrong answer to this, but there is usually an easy answer. There is a, a variable that might be easier to eliminate. And in this case, if we notice x and negative x, if we added these two equations together, that's going to cause cancellation. So that means it's easy for me to eliminate x. So that's what I'm going to do. So I take equation 1 and 2. Notice, again, I'm numbering it so that I can track which equations I'm working with at any given time. So x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. And plus negative x plus 3y minus z equals negative 6. So that causes the x's to cancel out when I add them. And then negative 2y plus 3z, that's just 1y. Negative 3z minus z, that's 2z. Careful about those 2's and z's, right? And then 9 minus 6, or plus negative 6, will be 3. And don't forget that equal sign, right? So we have y plus 2z equals 3. And notice that I am labeling this as equation 4. So equation 4 will come back a little bit later. But for right now, I now need to repeat what I did to eliminate x, but with two other, with a different pair of equations from my original set of three. Because right now, I have only worked with these two. And so I need something to relate to equation three. So I get to pick either one and three or two and three. The easier answer is one and three, simply because one just has a positive x. But honestly, Two and three would work just as well. Actually having that negative x makes things easy in its own way. So it really, there is no right answer to which one you pick. It's whatever seems easier to you. So in my case, I decided to pick equation one. So in order to use equation one, however, if I were to just add equations one and three right now, I would get three x, right? Ignoring equation two, I get three x, and then 
uh, minus 7y plus 8z equals 26, right? So I didn't eliminate x. So that's not very helpful. So what I need to do is, um, is uh, essentially find a way for that x to be eliminated by multiplying um, that one of the equations, or both of the equations even, by some number to make the x's match up. Okay, so um, in this case, in order to get the x, x's to match, the coefficients of the x's specifically, I'm going to take two, uh, negative 2 times equation 1. So negative 2 times equation 1 gets me negative 2x plus 4y minus 6z equals negative 18. So I distribute this negative 2 to the whole equation, right, when I do that multiplication. Now I add and I get that elimination that I want. So I got rid of my x's and it has to be the same variable. You want to eliminate the same variable every time. Um, but again, it doesn't matter which variable you choose, it's just you need it to be the same one for both pairings, right? Um, so we get that cancellation and then I'm going to end up with 4y minus 5y is negative y. Negative 6z plus 5z is negative z. Negative 18 set plus 17 is negative 1. And so I get negative y minus z equals negative 1. And again, I'm referring to this as equation 5. Okay, so now I have two equations with two variables right there. That, hopefully we know how to solve. Once again, maybe you want to bring in substitution at this point. I'm going to stick with elimination because that is my preferred method in general, but we know how to solve equations in two variables. So I take these, I put them together, and I notice, hey, y and negative y, that's easy to eliminate. So I'm going to eliminate my y's here just by simply adding the two equations together. The y's will cancel out, and I'll be left with 2z minus z, so z equals 2. And that's nice and easy. I didn't even have to get rid of a, a coefficient or anything. z equals 2. So now I know what z is, right? So my goal was to get an x, y, z coordinate. Right now, I know what z is. It's 2. I just need to find x and y. To find x and y, I just work backwards. And I take this z and I plug it into one of the two equations. Doesn't matter which one, just pick one of them. And so I'm going to pick equation 4, and I plug in. So I get y plus 2 times 2 equals 3, and I solve for y. So that's y plus 4 equals 3, which means y equals negative 1. And then once again, now I have y and z. I need to get x. I go over to an equation that has my y and z in it, which will allow me to solve for x. So pick any one. I pick equation 1. I plug in here. This will let me solve for x and I get x equals 1. So my final solution is 1, negative 1, 2. And we need to state this in order in a, an ordered triple in parentheses and all of that because this is a coordinate point in three-dimensional space. So don't just give me x equals y equals z equals. Give me the coordinate point. That is your solution. This is what you should you know, box your answer and all of that. Okay. Now, that was a situation where we actually got um, a singular solution. This is the only solution to this system. We've basically proven it. Though we should go back and actually plug it into all of the equations to make sure our, to check our work, because that's a big thing in these is so much little arithmetic stuff that can go wrong so easily. So please, please, please plug back in and make sure it's actually true what you've stated. But other than that, we can see that there is only this one answer. There's no other way to get other answers as long as we're doing things correctly. So what about the situations where that's not the case? The two other situations where there's no answer or there's infinite answers. How do we recognize that? So in this case, this is called an inconsistent system. There's no way for you to know that upon seeing it, but we're going to learn how to recognize that. So here, I have x minus 3y plus z equals 4, negative x plus 2y minus 5z equals 3, 5x minus 13y plus 13z equals 8. I start in the exact same way because, again, I don't know that this is a special type of system. I just know it's 
a system of equations I've been given and asked to solve. So in order to eliminate something, I look at this and I say, okay, what's easy? And once again, x is pretty easy to eliminate between equations one and two, so that's what I'm gonna use. So I take equations one and two, I eliminate x just by adding them without having to multiply or anything like that, right? And so I get that cancellation and I'll end up with negative y minus four z equals seven. Once again, I, I rinse and repeat, right? I go and get two more, a, a different pair of equations, this time involving equation three. So I'm gonna pick one and five, you could pick two and five, truly doesn't matter, whatever works for you. So I pick one and five. And so in order to use one and five, I'm gonna have to multiply equation one by five in order for these two to interact to get that cancellation of my x values, right? So negative five, specifically neg negative five, not just five, negative five times x is negative five x, times negative three y is positive 15 y, negative five z, and then ne equals negative 20. So now when I add these together, notice what happens. 15 y minus 13 y, that's two y, negative five, z plus 13z is 8z, negative 20 plus 8 is negative 12. Cool. So now I've got my equations 4 and 5 just like normal, and I'm going to try to combine them in some way. So I notice that, well, this time I don't get an easy cancellation, so I'm going to have to manipulate one of them. So I'm going to take equation 4 and I'll multiply by 2. But would you look at that? There's something interesting going on here. When I multiply equation 4 by 2, it looks like it's just the opposite of equation 5, except over here. So that's the key. When I add these together, I'll actually end up eliminating y and z. But I don't eliminate the other side of the equal side. So I end up with zero, because these got, these went away, they, they added to zero, and equals two. Now, does zero equal two? I hope we all know the answer to that. No, it doesn't, right? Those are two completely different numbers. There's no, x value I can plug in that's gonna make zero equal to two. That's just not how that works. So this is a situation where we have what is called a contradiction, which is a false statement. That it's an always false statement. Which means we can then conclude that this system is, again, what's called inconsistent, which means there is no solution. And so um, in this particular example, each plane intersects the other two, but not at the same location. But um, we would just report our answer as no solution, and that's it, put a box around it. Next, the other side of that is instead of no solution, we get a lot of solutions, infinite solutions, in fact. So how does that work? So this is what's called a dependent system. Um, again, wouldn't necessarily be able to recognize that upon looking at it. Maybe you might see a hint at this if you look at equations one and two. Uh, well, yeah, at equations one and two, you might see a pattern here because they're f related to each other in a way. They're, mul uh, they're multiples of each other. So that's kind of a hint that you're going to end up with this problem, but that's not always going to be the case. So um, let's see. First, again, we start by just multi uh, multiplying one of the equations by something in order to do some elimination. Again. There's no right or wrong answer to which two, which pair you pick. I picked equation one and two and to eliminate x just because that's kind of what I default to. But again, there is an easier thing to eliminate here. If I picked equation one and three, then I could get rid of the y's without even having to multiply. So I could eliminate y and start with equation one and three and that's fine too. There's not a right or wrong answer to that. Pick whatever feels right to you. But I picked equation one and two just because consistency, I guess. So in order to um, eliminate x, again, doesn't have to be x, but I picked x, I multiply equation one by negative two. So we see those negative four x, positive four x goes away, but oh, interesting. Negative two y, positive two y, those also go away. Six z, negative six z those also go away. So I end up getting this statement zero equals zero, which is not a very helpful equation four to have, right? This is what is called an identity. 
which is an always true statement. Zero does always equal zero, right? There's there's no way you're going to add, you know, there's no way you're going to plug in an x value that's going to change the fact that zero is the same thing as itself, zero, right? So there's nothing we can plug, uh, so any x value you, you plug in ends up giving uh, being a possible true statement. So we have infinite solutions. However, we don't just say infinite solutions, put a box about around it and move on. We want to give what is called the general solution in terms of x. This will allow us to plot the exact line that is the um, that produces the infinite solutions. Because it's not like I can say, oh, OK, every single pairing of x, y, z coordinate that's, uh, I shouldn't say pairing. Every single triple of x, y, z coordinates works for this. No, there are plenty of x, y, and z values I can't plug in that aren't going that aren't going to work, right? But there are infinitely many that will, and so we want to be able to establish some sort of way to essentially figure out what the y and z are based on knowing what x is. So when x is one, what are y and z in this line that? It, that creates the solution to this three-dimensional intersecting set of planes. So to do this, we look for the general solution, which means what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate a different variable besides x. So I go and I take equations one and three this time. Again, doesn't matter. I picked one and three. Doesn't matter which ones you pick. But um, Picking one and two kind of causes a problem because they are basically multiples of each other, so you will end up with the same situation again. So that's why I'm picking one and three this time. You kind of want to interact with your third, um, your third equation if you haven't. So um, we're going to add equations one and three. And notice what happens is it's an easy elimination of y when I do this, right? The y's just go away, and I get. 3x minus 2z equals 0. Cool. OK. I'm not, notice that I didn't label this as equation 4 or 5 or anything like that, because I'm not going to be utilizing it in that way again. In fact, what I'm going to do is, remember the phrase in terms of x? I just want to take this equation and solve it for z in terms of x. So when I do that, I just I subtract the 3x, right? And I divide by negative 2. And I'll get that z equals 3 halves x. Now, I'm going to repeat this, but eliminating z this time. So I take equation 1 and then 3 times equation 3 to allow for z to be canceled out. And notice what happens is I get an equation that is just x's and y. So 5x minus 2y equals 0. Now I can solve for y in terms of x. Okay, So I subtract 5x, I divide my negative 2, I get y equals 5 halves x. And so I have a general solution now. My general solution is x comma 5 halves x comma 3 halves x. The general solution still has x's in it. right? So in terms of x means I can name an input x value and receive output y and z values because each coordinate is given with a relationship to x. So if I say x equals 1, then I get, oh, y equals 5 halves and z equals 3 halves, right? If x equals 0, well, y equals 0 and z equals 0, right? These are both parts of the solution set. So if I wanted to write out my solution set, I could say, well, this is a, solu a possible solution. This is a possible solution. And there are infinitely many more possible solutions. Depending on what x value I choose to plug in, I can then get my y and z values. But the answer you want to give to a problem like this is the general solution. Because we can find the infinite values, but I don't expect you to write out the infinite values, right? So give me the general one, again, in terms of x, with those x's left over so that I can find any solution that I possibly want.